everyone and welcome to Payment. I hope you've got your creative juices well topped up because tonight we're going to have fun. I'm Tess and I will be your artist and instructor for this evening. And although I've painted since I can remember, I never thought myself good enough to earn my living from art. But art is something you can learn, so I did a fine arts diploma and now hopefully if you have any questions about painting, I will be able to answer them. It has taken me many years to get enough courage to try and work towards earning my living through art, but that is what I'm trying to do now. I'll be walking you through this painting, Autumn Tree at Sunset, and I'd like to remind you that this evening is about fun, so if you have any positive comments to make about other people's work or your own, please say it loudly. If you have any negative comments, keep it to yourself, okay? Everyone has a unique style and techniques, and, that, and that's great, that's what it's about. So the piece that you make tonight will be unique to yours. If you want to paint something different to what I'm walking you through, or just use different colours, that's also grand. It's all part of having fun, you're just here to have fun. If you're taking pictures or recordings tonight, please share them with us. We are on Facebook and Twitter. So, does everyone have their paints and brushes and canvas and aprons? If you're anything like me, you really need that apron because acrylic does not wash out when it's dry. Okay, let's get on with it. To start, we're going to paint the entire background yellow. We're going to try not to use too much water because we want fairly intense yellow. Just paint the whole thing yellow. You always come and get more yellow if you need it. brush out of water, always put it in water, otherwise it will dry out and that will be the end of that brush. Now we're going to mix some orange to do the foreground. And remember that red is a very strong colour so you don't want to mix much of it, you want to take a fair amount of yellow and just a tip of red. You can see it gets pretty dark. And with a bit of water, and here we go, it's going to be paler orange up near the top and a darker orange with more red near the bottom. It doesn't have to be even because this is the forest floor so it can actually be quite stripy which gives it a nice feel of depth and uh, texture. So it's going try and keep this side a bit less orangey. This is where the sun is going to be. Alright, so where the sun is the ground is going to be lighter. Make it redder. On the right. bottom and lighter on the top. I'll be bottom half covered with orange, getting redder towards the bottom, nice and stripy. And now we're going to put in the main tree. We're going to paint it red at first to get a sort of background red. Um, and we will make it darker later. Just about the middle of the, pit, of the canvas, we're going to put a vertical line. And about where we want to stop our tree root, we can put a squiff line and take that out a bit further. This is working in pure red now, no mix at all. Okay, so from this vertical line we're going to make another line just less than a halfway to the, to the end of the canvas, to the edge of the canvas, and take it down. Then to the root we're going to round it off a little bit on this side and this side where the root comes out a long way, we're going to round it off a lot. About where this bends at this corner, we're going to go up, about halfway to the top, and then split that into two branches. The last major branch, just below this tip, we're going to take a curve up, and another curve to the corner there. You might want to go to a thinner brush here to get the thinner, thinner branches. That's the main branches blocked in. So now what I'm going to do, after I've loaded up with a bit more red, is make those branches knobbly and gnarly, and the stem as well. So I'm going to 
make bumps on the stem over here. Just make that outline a bit more interesting. Again, we don't have to make it even when we fill it in. We fill it in loosely so that we get a bit of texture to the tree. So we keep on making this gnarly, bring a bump out there, another bump out here. You paint on one side of the branch here and then on the other side of the branch there, suddenly that branch is bent. As I say, don't try to make it too even, you want a bit of texture in this trunk. It's an old gnarly tree. Most of my brush strokes are going downwards, sort of in a smiley shape to give that gnarled effect. Now we're going to put the sun in and we can always touch it up again later if we get colour on it. But right now we're going to put it in to guide us when we do our vertical trees, the aspens and birches and things in the background. So it's more or less in the centre of that circle and again it doesn't have to be exact. But I'm going to put it in about there. Now I'm using pure white over the yellow and just a little circle of sun. goes from darker blue near the top to practically white over here. Where we've painted tree and leaf, this tells us where sky is not. So we're going to paint out the yellow around the top, getting starting at in a band of dark blue across the top, mixing a bit more white, lighter blue, um, mixing a bit more white, get more lighter blue, until we get down to white about here. If we miss a few pieces, that doesn't matter. It just means that there's some yellow leaves visible. And remember, when you're mixing blue, you need the tiniest bit of blue in your white to get a quite a strong blue. So here we start at the top. I'm going to... This you want fairly thick because you want it opaque. And I'm going to put in a few tiny little dots to give the effect of sky just peeping through very tiny bits between the leaves. One of the things about acrylic is you can paint over your painting, so if some of your sky is too light or too dark, you can go back again and lighten it or darken it. So I'm lightening the sky a bit. Nice and thin. And the reason why we put the sun's rays in first before we do the brown of the tree is so that we know where not to paint brown. It'll be smudgy and that gives you texture of the bowl of the tree. Because remember it's a very nice gnarly old tree. And again you don't have to be very exact with this because if a little red shows through it just adds to the texture. And then we're going to paint the thinner paint between the sun's rays. Down at the bottom here we can get particularly dark because that's in heavy shadow. But again when we're dealing with the sun's rays we want to make it a little thinner. Okay, we have the tree blacked in and the sun's rays in, but we still need to give a very thin coat of brown to some areas on these trees to bring them out and give them a bit of a shadow, give them some leaves at the bottom. 
So we're going to take some fairly thin paint and paint in the leaves, particularly dark where this tree's shadow would be. Just dabbing them in quite a regular shadow would be more or less along here and then coming down. Now the foreground trees are going to be darker than the background trees. It's one of the ways you create depth. So these trees in the foreground are going to get a bit more brown on them than the ones in the background. Some of them I'm just going to leave completely unbrowned. Um, and some of them just a titch of little bra, this little titch of bra. And then this is a foreground tree again, but it's a bit behind this branch. So to make this branch come forward, I make it darker. Now usually they say that when you make something darker, it pushes back. But in this case, because we're working with backlighting, the reverse is true. And you notice that outside from behind the tree, I'm putting in very light dabs to give it a bit of a leafy ground. Not too many, just a few. So we're going to do the shadows. Now remember the shadows go away from the sun. So it's just a case of a very thin back and forth. So in the foreground, I'm going back in with a bit of red dabbing it right over the brown to get a sort of, well, a, a more leafy texture down there. Some light ones in the background there. Okay, now we have the last step and that is blending in the sun's rays. And that's it. Just a bit of yellow over the sun's rays to push them back a bit so they don't glare out quite so much. A friend of mine agreed to come and do this as an experiment to see how my instruction worked and this is her result. I'm very amazed. I think it's absolutely marvellous. She's got herself a painting. Thank you for attending.